Hello. This is a video about correcting geometric distortions in images. I'll be using three pieces of software Photo Ninja 1.3, DxO Optics Pro 10, and Lightroom 6. I'm not very familiar with Photo Ninja, so I hope I can do it justice. My apologies if I don't. Let's start by thinking about the sort of geometric distortion that we may encounter. And let's look at these bookshelves. At the moment, the uprights are upright, the horizontals are horizontal, the shelves are parallel to one another, the straight lines are straight. We'll look at two sorts of distortion, the first of which is caused by camera lenses and causes straight lines to become curved. And the second one is caused by the angle at which we look at subjects, which will make parallel lines converge, make them come closer together as they move into the distance. So first, with the sort of distortion produced by camera lenses, you may see something like this. It's known as barrel distortion. The straight lines curve outwards, away from the centre. This is called pincushion distortion. The lines curve inwards, towards the centre. And this is the sort of look that you may get with a fisheye lens. Then there are the distortions caused by the angle at which we look at things. Here we're looking straight on, and everything is straight and parallel. If we look from the side, the uprights are still upright, but the horizontals are converging into the distance. If we look from the top, the horizontals are still horizontal, but the verticals are converging as they move away from us. And if we look from the top and the side, both the horizontals and the verticals are converging, but they're still all straight. And we may, as we'll see later, have combinations where we get both the curved effect from a lens and the converging effect from the perspective. You are more likely to see the curved effects when you're using RAW. When you're shooting JPEG, the camera will, to a very large extent, correct barrel distortion and pincushion distortion. When you're using RAW, your software may or may not correct it for you. You may have to do it yourself. I want to start by going over to DxO Optics Pro and have a look and see how that handles some of this distortion. Here we've got barrel distortion and in DxO there's a section on distortion and let me first of all show you something else while I think about it. Here is a raw version. This is a pair of pictures. This is a raw. This is a, um, a JPEG that I've mucked about with uh, and the actual JPEG itself as it came out of the camera it looks like that. Uh, and this is what the raw looks like if the uh, distortion hasn't been corrected. So we can tell DxO to correct it automatically down here and we'll turn that on and it's improved it but these lines the top and the bottom are still bending slightly away from the center so DxO hasn't fully corrected that so down here now if we say work we'll use a manual approach 
and it's gone back to how it was without any correction at all and I've got a slider here, this intensity slider that I can use and as I pull it across the lines straighten up and I can get them more or less straight and I did by the way uh, tell the XO that what I wanted to correct was barrel distortion, it does say barrel distortion here With pin cushion distortion it's basically the same. I tell it that I want to use a manual approach and this time I tell it it's pin cushion distortion and I pull the slider until it's as near as I can get it to being straightened out. Um, have I taken that too far? Well no I'm not sure actually if I can get that one completely straight. It may not be letting me apply enough correction. I, that's, that's pretty much it. I think, I'm thinking the top is bowing slightly, actually. Um, the third one was fisheye. And again, I tell it what sort of distortion it is. I want it manual, and this it's fisheye. And again, I've got a slider, and I pull that across, and it has pretty much corrected it. So that's the situation with DxO and the optical um, distortions caused by the camera. I can't show you DxO correcting the perspective distortions because you have to purchase a separate um, part of DxO optics where you have to uh, purchase viewpoint uh, and I haven't done that it's quite expensive um, and um, so I can't demonstrate it to you what I'm going to do now is to go over to Photo Ninja and again I'll, I'll say again I'm not familiar with Photo Ninja so I hope I can do this here we have the raw as it's come in, as we had with DxO. It's not been corrected, so we'd need to correct this ourselves. We've got distortion and geometry section over here, and similarly, we've got here we've got a uh, pin cushion and barrel distortion. So it's just a matter of turning this in the right direction. Can I take that a bit bigger? That'll do. Um, yeah, so I pull the slider along until it straightens out. Now in this case, it's actually not giving me a completely straight result. It's sort of bending there and there, and I suspect... Oh, well, I'm wrong. There's something called moustache, um, which I don't know how to use. Um, and so I can't, just by using, anyway, just by using the pin cushion and barrel distortion slider, I can't quite get those lines straight. Um, I suspect there's something I don't understand about the software that might enable me to do that. If I now look at the pin cushion distortion and go to distortion and geometry and pull the slider in the opposite direction, uh, that straightens up, that looks okay, that looks good. And for fisheye correction, if I go to the fisheye one and go back to distortion and geometry and use the slider for fisheye correction, there we go, that's done. That one more or less, I think. Yeah. Then we have the perspective distortion. Let's look from the side. And go to distortion and geometry. And this time it's geometry, it says here, rather than lens distortion. And it's the horizontal perspective. 
so we want to pull this around so we can get it quite a long way around it's not completely head-on as it were um, but it's it's a long way around then if we look at the vertical distortion again we go back to distortion and geometry and now it's the vertical perspective and that one we can get pretty much completely vertical obviously with these things you need to crop after you've done these corrections and one of the things to bear in mind is if you're taking photos with the intention of doing corrections perspective corrections afterwards you need to leave plenty of space around the thing that you're photographing so that it doesn't get chopped off because you can see that uh, um, correcting these does cause bits of the image to be uh, chopped off let's try the one which has both horizontal and vertical and so we'll go to distortion and geometry and we'll try the vertical one and that's that's well that's looking quite good and now we'll try adding some horizontal to it as well and now it's sloping upwards and it may be do we need to rotate oh, there we go um, so that's horizontal but it's not the verticals aren't looking very vertical now um, and I tried this earlier and I got stuck at this point that's about as close as I can get it I think uh, to being straight on So that's correction of both sorts of distortion with Photo Ninja. And there's one more example we can look at, which is a real world example, this one. If I go to here, now this image has a combination of barrel distortion here you can see this is curved at the same time we've got vertical perspective distortion these pillars are uh, moving together but as we look up at them there is also a confusing factor here that these pillars I think are in fact curved and they do get narrower at the top and that rather confuses the issue we're also getting, I think, horizontal perspective distortion because we're looking across from one corner of the room. So we need to correct three things here. So if we go into the distortion and geometry, we'll need to correct, excuse me, correct some barrel distortion. And there we go, that's straightened that up. And then we need to correct the vertical distortion which is something like that and we might or might not want to try and apply a bit of horizontal perspective there we go so we're looking that line there has become horizontal it was if I take it back it was at an angle there and I've managed to actually get it horizontal so that has corrected pretty much those three things simultaneously obviously and you'd, you'd need to crop this and again you can see how if you're going to be doing correction you need to be aware that that bits of it are going to be um, not usable because the crop that you do is going to cause uh, bits of it to be just outside of, of, of your rectangular crop so that's Photo Ninja. I'm going to go across to Lightroom now. There we're looking at the um, square one. Now I'm going to go and look at the raw image. Now this is the raw image and I've not applied any correction to it. Lightroom does that automatically. 
So that's different from the other two applications that we saw. In terms of correcting the barrel distortion, it's very similar. We've got some sliders and in this case it's called distortion and I pull it in one direction and it corrects like that and that looks okay I think. For the pin cushion distortion I pull the slider in the opposite direction okay, and that looks okay I think. Maybe that's better. Again, this one isn't perfect. Um, and it may be that I need to apply something else. Is that making it better? I don't think so. To my eye, the bottom one of these is more nearly straight than the top one is. Now I think one of the things with these, this optical distortion is that it may not simply be a case of um, uh, or, uh, that things getting bent in the same way all across the lens. Um, and I, I think Lightroom's having a bit of trouble getting this absolutely perfect. I think the top looks okay now but the bottom looks very slightly um, bending downwards to me. Fish eye, I can't do. Lightroom doesn't do fish eye. For the perspective distortion, we go to another part of Lightroom. And I have to try and remember which of these to use. I think it's possibly that one, yeah. So that gives us a pretty much side on view. It's made all those lines parallel. For the vertical one, I'm going to click on vertical. And that does that. For the one that's combined, I'm going to click on this one, full. There we go, that's not done too badly. So that is Lightroom doing that sort of correction. And if I go to the one that we looked at that has combination of barrel distortion and perspective distortion. Here in Lightroom we don't see the barrel distortion because Lightroom has corrected it. Even though this is a raw image, uh, Lightroom has, has corrected it uh, automatically. And if I now click the auto button, I think it is, then we've now got it upright and the it's had a go at the perspective distortion as well. So it's done it's done all three of those things in one move. And obviously if we have this would be more applicable than bookcases, um, if we're looking at a building, again we might want to um, do that sort of thing to it. Now again that one's bowing out slightly so I might want to go into the manual mode and start mucking about with uh, rotating it uh, to get it upright and then um, the vertical distortion to get it so that it doesn't go in or out at the top and so on. Um, and similarly with this one. Again this would be true with all the packages that, that you to the extent it allows you to do it automatically you can do it, try and do it automatically. Um, uh, which I'll try on this one and um, then you can alter it well that's not too bad actually uh, you can alter it using the um, using the sliders <laughs> I say it's all right this tree has developed a most peculiar <laughs> angle uh, over there it is a tree that if I just uh, go back it is a tree that is at an odd angle it's it's you can't see it here but the trunk is also at a very odd angle which confused me a lot when I was playing with this with different images um, so there are compromises with this as to how much actually you can achieve what is practical to do um, but you can make some 
uh, a lot of, of adjustments more and less easily for certain sorts of types of distortion depending on what software you're using and whether you find the right bits of the software uh, in order to make it do what you want to do. So that's it for now. Goodbye.